Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, guys, our journey has brought us to the anterior and posterior chambers. These are structures that I think aren't talked about enough in a lot of opticianry courses. They play pretty big roles in a few things, which we're going to talk about. However, uh, when it comes to stuff, understanding different pathologies that your patients are going to have uh, that you're not going to be treating. However, like we've talked about before, it's important to be in the loop when somebody has a problem and you're one of the professionals that's part of the eye care team that's helping them out. If you don't understand their issues, uh, you don't look like you're in the loop. Um, and people may lose confidence in your abilities if they know more about their problem than you do when you're the professional. So it all starts with understanding the structures, and then we can understand the different ailments that affect these structures. We're not going to go into detail about the ailments right now, but we're going to look at the anterior and posterior chambers, which have a lot of implications in things like glaucoma, uh, even in cataracts, cataract surgeries, not directly, but kind of indirectly. So why don't we jump in and take a look at a few of these things. So first, let's talk about the anterior chamber. So again, uh, we're probably getting used to this, seeing the cross section of the eye. The anterior chamber is that area right there where we've highlighted in blue, right, but we, we, we'll use the right terms, posterior behind, the back surface of the cornea and anterior to the iris and the lens okay so this is this is the area that we are talking about and we're just going to reiterate that the anterior chamber forms the space behind the posterior cornea and in front of the crystalline lens and iris and whatnot uh, the space of the anterior chamber is filled with aqueous humor very important okay the aqueous humor pathway is a huge part of keeping intraocular pressure and things like glaucoma are a result of when things go wrong so you know, make note of this, aqueous humor is very important. Now, the average depth of the anterior chamber is approximately three millimeters. Is that important? Not really. Uh, but just, I, I like it when, when students understand that we're dealing with really small stuff. Now, when it comes to the refractive um, power of the eye, these depths actually do play a factor. Uh, we're going to talk about, in a few lectures, we're going to talk about the optics of the eye and the spacing of all the different uh, refractive structures actually has something to do with it. And the depth of the anterior chamber can actually play in uh, its ability, to, or sorry, the eye's ability to drain aqueous humor. So uh, anyways, you don't need to know, memorize the average depth of the anterior chamber, but it was just kind of cool to put it in there so that you understand it is super small. Now, the corner of the chamber where the iris and the posterior cornea meet is called the iridocorneal angle. We just call it the angle. Um, and it's here where the aqueous humor is allowed to flow out of the eye via the trabecular meshwork and the canal of Schlem. Uh, I'm going to just pull out a little pen tool here and I'm going to show you what we're talking about. It's this area right around there, the angle. Okay, I'm going to circle it. So that's the area we're talking about. That's where all the drainage takes place. This is extremely important. Aqueous humor is not a stagnant uh, fluid. It's constantly produced. We'll talk about where in a minute. Um, and it has to be drained. It's a constant production drainage kind of relationship of back and forth that actually helps maintain interocular pressure and that's the area where it drains and this is the area where things can go wrong uh, in the drainage for a couple different reasons and something that you definitely need to know about because you'll hear different terms thrown around when you have patients coming in to see the doctor and it's good for you to understand what that all means now if the anterior chamber is shallow meaning smaller than that three millimeters we talked about uh, the angle is at risk of being pinched off or closed 
And this can result in closed angle or acute angle closure glaucoma. This is bad news. So one thing that is common, sometimes people can have a little bit of a smushed eye. A lot of hyperopes have shorter eyes. Uh, that could be the reason for a shallow anterior chamber. Another common reason is lens changes. The crystalline lens, let's pull out a blue pen here. Uh, the crystalline lens right here, right? Sometimes if the crystalline lens is starting to change shape due to cataract formation or whatever reasons, it can apply pressure in this direction towards the iris, pushing the iris forward a little bit and pinching off the uh, the angle. So this is a common thing. What, what the the procedure that is used to kind of alleviate this is you can blast a little hole through the iris. Uh, this is called iridotomy, and this is done with a laser. At one point, years ago, it used to be iridectomy, where they actually surgically removed a piece, but now it's easy, just a little blast with the laser in and out. Uh, this allows flow, you know, in, in these particular situations. Now, we've gotten a little deeper into this than I kind of wanted to. However, I like to kind of give a little bit of context as to how this all works, uh, because these are things that are kind of seen on the daily. Uh, so that's the anterior chamber, and this is kind of, you know, what goes on with it as far as it being filled with, with aqueous humor and how uh, it flows out at the angle. Now let's take a look at the posterior chamber. So again, let's pull out the eye and you see where I've highlighted in blue here. This is the posterior chamber. So this is actually the area. So it's, uh, let's read it off here. The posterior chamber forms the narrow space behind the peripheral part of the iris and in front of the anterior of the lens uh, and the ciliary body. So, of course, we haven't talked about the crystalline lens and ciliary body in detail. However, if you did some practice and you started labeling uh, the diagram of the eye, you even without knowing the, the details about these structures, you should still know where they are, right? So we know that this is the lens and the ciliary body is here. So the posterior chamber forms that area behind the iris, which is here, okay? And the posterior chamber is filled with, same thing, aqueous humor, okay? It actually flows from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber. It's produced by the ciliary body <clears throat> in the posterior chamber, flows through the pupil, into the anterior chamber, something we will talk about in much more detail when we start talking about the flow of aqueous humor. Uh, but for the time being, we kind of understand where the anterior and posterior chambers are. They're both filled with the same stuff. This is all you need to know to this point. Uh, and this is actually really useful information. So if you didn't actually study this before, you know a lot more about the eye today than you did yesterday. And let's look over again, the significance to us as opticians. Well, like I've mentioned, you need to know you need to understand aqueous humor flow. Many of the issues, many of the pathologies, many of the diagnostic tests that we do all revolve indirectly around aqueous humor flow. We don't, you're not going to hear people talk about it, you know, what's his aqueous humor flow. However, we're going to talk about interocular pressure. We're going to talk about checking the angles. We're going to talk about uh, open and closed angle glaucoma. They all relate back to aqueous humor and the aqueous humor lives in the chambers. Uh, like I mentioned, important for understanding IOP, critical to understanding the mechanisms and treatment of glaucoma. See, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm saying all these things before. However, you get the point. Uh, it's very important when it comes to these things. And, uh, oh yeah, and the anterior chamber is often examined for signs of inflammation especially after surgery. So uh, this is kind of like the spot where a lot of doctors will check first after cataract surgery, after uh, different, different types of surgery that are inside the eye because there are a lot of structures that are bathed in the aqueous humor and it's kind of like this common juice that's in there that all the different structures kind of live in. So if there's any kind of inflammation, there actually are inflammatory cells that kind of hang out and suspend in the uh, in the aqueous humor. One of the terms we use for this is flare, uh, almost like a snow globe, you know, when you shake a snow globe and everything kind of hangs around. Uh, this is bad news. This means that there's inflammation somewhere um, and then the doctor has to go and find where this is from and try to treat it. So uh, the anterior chamber is definitely an area that we as opticians, we don't necessarily examine this. And again, this is not something you're sitting in a dispensary with, with glasses on the table, discussing progressives and discussing things where you're going to say, so how's your anterior chamber? 
I get it. This is not necessarily what goes on. However, again, you have to understand what all these things are because when a patient comes in and talks to you about their glaucoma treatment, about the drops they're on, about all these different things, you will understand what that means. You're going to understand that they're talking about either the drainage or the production of aqueous humor. It lives in the anterior chamber. Or if they're talking about, you know, they had an iridotomy and different things like that, this all makes sense to you because you understand this kind of stuff. So that should do it. All right, we now understand the anterior and posterior chambers and we're ready to move on to some more stuff. See you in the next one.